Welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we're doing a little experiment. We're starting to get into some of the aspects of Korean natural farming. This is kind of a test for us this year. One of the things that we're starting out with is making small batches. We're going to be kind of experimenting with this on our vegetable garden for starters. And the first thing we're making today is called water soluble calcium phosphate. It's really pretty easy. You just basically take some old soup bones, which we have in here. We made bone broth from them, we took the bones out. Now we're going to heat these all the way to the point where they get charred black. And we'll show that when it's finished. Depends on how long, it depends on the th size and the thickness of the bones. But once they're charred black, then what we do is we mix it with some brown rice vinegar and that will, over a period of about 10 days, pull the calcium phosphate in the bones out into the solution and make it actually a water-soluble calcium uh, acetate and I believe it's probably phosphorus pentoxide which is probably what's in the solution. I'm not knowing an exact chemical formulation but all these are absorbable by plants. There's very specific dilutions that we use, and we can talk about that later as we do more of the things. But the whole idea is this is going to be helping the plants when they're in the flowering stage. Give them a little extra boost, and it's cheap. So I don't have to go to a store and buy a chemical. It seems to me it's really easy. I get a twofer out of it. I get a nice soup, and I get some calcium phosphate. Bones have about 44% phosphorus in them and probably similar amount of calcium. So it's really a nice, pretty rich solution when it's done. Okay. okay, we've been cooking these on the gas heat on kind of a low steady flame for about five hours and the bones are fairly charcoaled up. Um, some of them broke up a little bit. You can see they're fairly black. I think if we could do it a little longer it might even be a little better, but this is our first attempt so we'll see. So we'll pull these guys off the heat and then what we're going to do is let them cool down, uh, break them up a little bit, and then we'll move on to our next stage. Okay, we're moving on to the next step here. The bones have cooled down and um, we have uh, broken them up a little bit. And one of the things just to note is, is that when they are charred like this, they theoretically, you can break them just like a graham cracker, which I just did. And uh, so they're good to go. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, this is not exactly following the rules. So the end result may be a little different. And here's the reason. Um, we should be using brown rice vinegar, which we don't own. And uh, we gotta find a source for it. That's a decent type of brown rice vinegar. Not something that's distilled, but something that's more um, made with the mother, so to speak. Um, and so we're gonna just do this phase on this one because this is our first attempt at it and just see how it, it works. Theoretically you should get essentially the same nutrients but there may be some missing components in terms of some biology. But the, the formula is really pretty basic. You weigh out the bones. I previously weighed these guys out. It's approximately 255 grams of bones. Uh, we're going to put it into a container and then what we're going to do is we're going to add 10 times um, the weight of the bones to the weight of the vinegar. So uh, as an example, since we know that we have uh, 255, I'm not sure how much vinegar I can get in here, so I'm going to cap this out at about 150 grams of bone. You can set the rest of it aside for when we get some rice vinegar and do it correctly. So this is um, just putting the pieces in here. 
one, let's see, that's about right, 154, so that's close enough. And this is where we we'll start from. We have 154 grams of bone in there. So now we're going to see if we can get up to 10 times the weight. Get this to about 150 grams or 1050 grams. Getting Interesting closer. why one is floating. What do you need to be at? Right about there. It's about 10 to 1. And it looked like 150 grams is about the right choice. Now, what you can start to see happening here is we do have one that's a floater, but um, that's probably because there's some probably some air trapped in it. Interesting why it is. But you can see that the existing are bubbling. Are beginning to bubble. That means that the vinegar, the acetic acid, is reacting with the calcium and the phosphorus in it. And what's being off gas is CO2. Yeah, you can see under this one that there are some air bubbles trapped in it. Is that because it wasn't burned enough? No, it's probably because there's air on the inside. So this will just rust it, which I just did and see if it'll sink. There's still air in it. Maybe it'll sink over time. That's possible. Let it crunch up smaller and smaller and eventually I guess it'll probably sink. Ah, uh, the but lovely we'll smell out. of vinegar in my house. <laughs> The last step is we're just going to put a permeable piece of paper towel over it. And then we're just going to seal that with a rubber band. It's very high tech. And um, as you can see, things are bubbling away. The other piece will probably drop in a while, as soon as it, it becomes lobbed with enough vinegar in it. How long is it going to stay? This is going to take approximately 10 days. And what's going to happen is, is the color of this is going to change as uh, we go forward. So the color will start to become kind of a burnt umber look to it. Um, once it reaches that, that color and you no longer see any more bubbling, then the uh, vinegar is probably extracted everything that it can. So we're going to have the smell of vinegar in our house for 10 days. Well, we are German, so, you know, it's sauerkraut, whatever, right? <laughs> anyway, this is our, our first attempt at this. Um, to do it right in the future, like I said, you need to use brown rice vinegar and um, I think charring the bones looked like it worked out well and it's really a pretty simple process and we'll be able to use uh, this material in a very diluted spray to help flowering plants as well as uh, our veggies. Thank you.